camera. The camera. Hello. I'm just gonna just gonna wait till she's she's dead. Good Lord. Good Lord. Hi, I'm Holly. I am a user experience designer and a front end developer. And today we're gonna be talking about HTML. So let's get to it, because I'm bad at intros. So when you first start learning HTML, you usually gravitate towards these videos that are like, learn HTML in 10 minutes. And then you're like, I've watched six of these and I've learned no HTML. Well, we're gonna talk about it today and I'm going to break down how HTML works what its limitations are, and how do you use this in a real-world context. So without further ado, let's get to it. You want to learn HTML? Yeah. Why is HTML important, and why do we need it? HTML is used across every single website in the world, and it's used as a structural base. So right now I'm going to show you what a true HTML document looks like here. And if you're anything like me, you're probably thinking, where's the rest of the website? Like, that doesn't look right, that doesn't look complete. And if you're thinking that, that's great, and you're right. <laughs> the thing about HTML is that it's never used alone. It's always used in conjunction with CSS. They are so intertwined, and that's why it can be a little bit confusing to learn HTML first, because you're thinking, what's wrong with this? And when you look at code, you're seeing a lot of extra stuff in those HTML tags and you're thinking, what is happening? Why does this look like this? HTML provides the structure and CSS provides the styling. And they are so intertwined that you can actually code CSS inside HTML tags. I just feel like I need to mention that or else this is going to take a while to make sense. I know it did for me. We talked about how HTML provides structure for a page. Not only does it provide structure for your users and structure that you can style that later on, but you're also providing structure for the browser. Your browser actually reads HTML. You're telling the browser, whichever one you use, whether it be Chrome or Edge or Safari, hopefully not Internet Explorer, like what are you even doing? Hopefully not. Whichever one you use, the HTML tags are telling the browser what you're trying to put there. So that's why when you look at the same website and you look at it in Chrome and then you look at it in Firefox and then you look at it in Internet Explorer, you might see little discrepancies. So that's why that happens. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my folder. I'm going to create a new folder and we're going to title this HTML cheat sheet. Beautiful. So I'm going to be using a software called Brackets. It's really perfect for front-end development because it has a live preview. So you can actually see the changes that are going on live. Okay, so I'm going to bring my HTML cheat sheet, drag it into Brackets. Beautiful. So if you'll notice, there's nothing in there right now because I haven't put anything in there. So right click new file and we're just going to call this cheatsheet.html. This can be whatever you want. So first things first, we're going to declare it. I'm going to say, hey, this is an HTML document. So that's what we've done. And then next thing is that we need to tell the browser that, okay, we're actually coding in HTML. Just so you know, like everything, <laughs> just so you know. Thanks, Google. First things first, we're going to add a head. You won't actually see the head in your document. So if I save this and then do live preview, look, nothing happens. Oh, okay, it's loading. Yeah, nothing happens because this is a tag that is purely for the browser. One of the most important things that goes in there is your title. So I'm going to call this HTML cheat sheet. 
And if you'll notice, now this has changed at the top. This now says HTML cheat sheet. And once you get into CSS, the head is where you will link your style sheet, but we're not going to do that just yet. So then we're going to say, hey, all of our HTML body is right here. Now we're going to get into the actual structure of the page. So let's add a heading. So H1, that is our heading. Heading 1. And now, there we go. That's our heading 1. So, and we can do the same exact thing down the line. So page two is heading two. Page three is heading three. You got it. So, the importance of this is that you are telling the browser, hey, all of my H1s, all of my heading ones are the most important content on the page. So whenever Google scours your page for information, it's going to look at all your headings for the most important information. And then all the other headings are slightly less important. And this, this actually goes down to six, but no one ever uses six. And then after your headings, you probably want a little bit of paragraph text. This text forms a paragraph. Oh look, it's more, oops, it's more paragraph text. How lovely. This video is amazeballs. Okay, so look at that. Now we have three headings and then now we have a paragraph. Another quick way to just kind of fill in text is to use something called lorem ipsum. So I have this little plugin right here that's just got a copy. It's basically just gibberish. But when you're creating a page and maybe you don't have the content for it yet, this is a really good way to look at the page and see how is this page going to look. Okay, so let's look at our thing again. Oh lord! It's ugly, but it's there. But that's a channel for you all the way. <laughs> it's ugly, but it exists, I guess. So, what if we wanted to create a break in this paragraph? What if we didn't want just this entire wall of text? Well, we can use something called a break tag. Look at that. It's a little break. So you can see over here, the text is broken down. And let's say we wanted to actually create another space. Now we've created a space. So we create a line break and then another line break. And if you'll notice, a lot of the tags are intuitive. Body, not too bad. P for paragraph, H1 for heading one. Let's say, okay, I'm done with my paragraph. So I'm done with my paragraph. Now let's say I want to display information in a short way. Then we can have bulleted lists. So we're gonna say UL, unordered list. So this is a bullet point. So if you'll notice, everything has to be contained inside carrots. You have to have a beginning tag and an ending tag for all of this to work. So in my unordered list, I'm going to add LI, a list item. This is a list item. Okay, let's do that a couple times and see how that looks. Look at that, and now we have bullet points. So you can kind of see, it's very plain and dry. It is very plain and dry. But what's crazy is that this language is used across every single website in the world. Every single website uses HTML. And it's these bones that you can take and run with. And it's this language that you can take and style the ever-loving goodness out of it in CSS and create some really, really amazing things. So what if I don't want an order list? What if I don't want bullet points? What if I want something a little bit more structured? Well, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> we 
get an ordered list. And then, the, but the inside is the exact same. This is an ordered list item. So it's still li. The browser still knows, hey, since this list item is inside an ordered list and not an unordered list, then we're going to number this. And look at that. You have one, two, and three. Ain't that something? One of the next most important things that HTML provides are links. So this is this is the one that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because it's an A tag. So you're gonna have an A tag. So this is a link, but you have to tell it where to go. So anytime you have a link, you're gonna say A href equals then you're going to put in some quotations, and you're just telling the browser, hey, hey girl, look at this string, and then go do that. Do any website you want to. We're just going to do Google. Why not? Okay, so we have our link, but where is it? Oh no. Where has it gone? So you actually have to put in what you want the link to read. So in your string, you can link it to whatever website you want, but you actually have to put in something called anchor text in order for that to work. Okay, so now we have anchor text. Google! So if I click on this, okay, cannot get google.com. <laughs> I think, okay, I think it's, let's add in a little, let's add in a little, some, some. Go back. I would like to go back. Oh Lord, work with me. And there we go. It doesn't like it when you don't have in the HTTPS. So that is a link. So that's links and anchor text. The other thing you can do in HTML is include images. So if I want to put an image down here, first thing I'm going to need to do is go into my file folder. And then I need to create a new folder and we're going to title this images. Okay, and then I'm going to put in this little logo. I'm just copying and pasting it into my images folder. If you don't keep it within the same code folder, it's not going to know where to go. It's going to be like, what image are you talking about? Dundas.l image. So the really cool thing about brackets is that it knows you just added a file and it will be able to locate it for you. So if I want to add in an image, image, source, equals, and I just pressed enter, and it did that. Oh, okay, so it knows, hey, you just added a folder right here, images. Oh, did you mean this image? The only image that's in your file folder? Oh, yes, it did. There are some tags in HTML that don't need the double tag. You don't need the opening tag and the close tag, because for an image, there's really nothing else to put in there. So if we go back to our live preview, Load. You can do it. So you can see it's not a perfect science. Just thinking about it. There we go. And it's giant. <laughs> it's really, really huge. Okay. <laughs> and then another thing you can do in HTML are tables. So tables are one of those things that you just kind of avoid at all costs, but it's still good to know them anyways because you will probably have to code them at some point, unfortunately. So we're going to put in a table. Look at that! It's a table. But we also need a table room. 
So we have a table row. Now there's not a class for table column, so it's not like you can just set up your, your rows and your columns and then go from there like a grid, but we do have table headings. So I can just say, okay, table heading one. Table heading two. Table heading three. Okay, so this image is kind of getting in the way a little bit. It's giant. We're not focusing on styling right now, so I'm going to show you how to comment out something. So if I wanted to just make a comment to myself in code, I would do it like this. Carrot, exclamation point, a couple of dashes, and you see how this kind of turns gray? It's like, this is a comment. And then no exclamation on the other side. And then a little carrot. There you go. However, something cool that you can do is that if you have a piece of code that you've already written that you either can't use yet or you don't know how to use yet or you need something else for that to happen you can actually comment out entire sections of code so this image is getting really annoying and i don't want to deal with it right now so we're gonna do the same thing yo so it goes gray so you can do it across multiple lines so now you can see that just this is gray, and then this has become blue again. And this is what's so nice about having a legit text editor like Brackets, or Dreamweaver, or Visual Studio Code, Atom, something like that. That's a tool that you can use so you're not flying in the dark. And now, look, our image is gone. Now I can really focus on this table. So now that I've set up my table row, I've set up three columns. So now I have to do another row. But instead of using table heading, I'm going to use a tag called table data. Put in some of my favorite things. Chocolate. Um, busy soda. It's the best. Ah! A surprise guest of honey crisp apples. Oh my god! So good! So if you've noticed, for every table heading I have, for every table heading, I also have three table datas to match up with that. So we go over here. Okay, look. Heading one, heading two, heading three. Now we're getting somewhere. This is looking a little janky though, so I'm going to take off the tables, just so it's easier to see. Look at that, heading one, heading two, heading three, chocolate, Izzy soda, honey crisp apples. Now, you can do the same exact thing. So you can have as many rows as you want. So I'm just going to copy that entire section, it's another table row. And then we're also having three items. Let's just see what it looks like if I have six. So let's put six in the last row. I'm just copying and pasting just so y'all can see what this looks like. So you can do it. It's not gonna break anything, but it doesn't make sense. So that's why you do it that way. So that's pretty much it for this HTML cheat sheet. I really hope you like this video, and if you want to see more like it, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I just want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, let me know. I will try to get to them. But I really want you to be able to get something out of this video and to be able to go, oh, that makes sense now. So I hope that I did that for you. And I'm going to be posting this cheat sheet in the description just so you can have this as future reference. I'm also going to post a really great resource called the Front End Development Roadmap. And it shows you where to start and then what to learn next. And hopefully that will help. So good luck and happy coding.